So in this one, we'll be talking about two topics, the matrix transpose or the transpose operator and symmetric matrices. So let's start with the transpose. Now, if you open a dictionary, transpose means to change places with each other. That is to exchange places. Well, that's what it is. So given a matrix A, that is rectangular, so M by N, the transpose of the matrix denoted by A superscript T is a matrix obtained by interchanging the rows and columns of A. In other words, if A denoted explicitly by its elements AIJ, then A transpose is defined as AJI. So we see that the indices interchange. For example, if I'm given the following matrix A, 1, 3, 5, 7, 2, 4, 6, 8, then A transpose is obtained by grabbing each column and laying it down as a row. So the first column is now the first row of A transpose, 1, 3, 5, and 7. Likewise, the second column of A is now the second row of A transpose, 2, 4, 6, and 8. Okay? Now the transpose has some very useful properties, such as the transpose of the transpose is the matrix itself. So this is kind of like the inverse. If you apply the inverse twice of a matrix, you get the matrix itself. Two, if you add or subtract two matrices, then you take the transpose. This is the equivalent of taking the transpose of each and every matrix, then adding them up or subtracting them. Three, if you scale a matrix with a scalar S, then you take the transpose. This is the equivalent of scaling the transpose of the matrix. Four, the transpose of the product is the reverse order of the product of the transpose of each matrix. So this is also like the inverse. Recall that in the previous lecture, we mentioned that AB inverse is B inverse times A inverse, right? Five, if A is non-singular, then so is A transpose. So non-singularity is preserved upon transposing. And not just that, since the inverse exists, we can talk about A inverse. And if you take the transpose of the inverse, it is the equivalent of taking the inverse of the transpose. So transpose and inverse interchange. And six, doing an inner product on a vector, that is x1 down to xn as a row, multiplied by x1 down to xn as a column, that is the sum of squares of each of its entries, x1 square plus x2 square down to xn square, we get this, okay? So that's about it on the transpose of a matrix. We define what a transpose is. We talked about the properties of transposition. Now since we define the transpose of a matrix, we can go ahead and talk about a specific class of matrices called the symmetric matrices. So when is a matrix symmetric? It is symmetric when a transpose is A, right? That is, the elements found on the upper diagonal part are equal to those on the lower diagonal part. So in other words, if A is a square matrix where its elements is given by Aij, then A is symmetric when Aij is Aji for all i, j, n, 1 down to n. Okay, this only works for square matrices, right? It cannot work for rectangular ones. Now another way of looking at it is that when you interchange the rows and columns of the matrix A, you get A again. So an example is when A is A B, B, D. Try writing the transpose. A transpose is the row becomes a column, so A, B. The second row becomes the second column, so B. And again, we got A. So A transpose is A, hence symmetric. Let's give a small remark here. If A is rectangular, that is M by N, then A transpose A is symmetric. How do we prove that? Well, Let's take the matrix that we should prove to be symmetric, take its transpose, then use property 4 right here, saying that A, B transpose altogether is B transpose, A transpose. Well, take the transpose of the second matrix, so we get A transpose, then transpose the first one, that is the transpose of the transpose. Now use property 1, saying that the transpose twice cancels out, so we get A transpose A. Hence, A transpose A transpose is A transpose A. So, 
the matrix A transpose A is symmetric. Now, why is this remark important? We will see in future lectures that A transpose A, this particular matrix, the A transpose times A, is critical for the computation of what is called the singular values of the matrix. We'll see that in future lectures, but for the moment, keep this remark in mind. So that's it for this lecture. In this one, we talked about the transpose of a rectangular matrix, referred to as A superscript T, that is also a rectangular matrix obtained by exchanging the rows and columns of matrix A. We gave some properties of the transposition, the six properties over here, and then we talked about symmetric matrices, which are a specific class of matrices where if you grab a matrix, you do the transpose, you get the matrix itself, this matrix is termed symmetric. It's worth noting that in many problems in engineering and science, they involve symmetric matrices, and entire sections of this course will deal with symmetric matrices. As you will see in future lectures, when a problem involves a symmetric matrix, this normally would lead to a faster and more accurate solution. It is of utmost importance that you remember property four right here. This is also referred to as the cyclic property of the transpose operator. We will see it many times throughout this course. And sometimes while doing calculations and I stumble upon a B transpose, I will just write it as B transpose A transpose. It's super important. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this lecture. If you found it useful, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions whatsoever, please leave a comment down in the comment section below and I'll get to it as soon as possible.